Hey there, everyone. It's Christoph. How are things in your world today? Uh, we're all experiencing some challenging times right now. Um, there's a lot of fear, a lot of worry, a lot of anger, and uh, mostly fear out there in the world, across the world, my friends all over the world. And it's, it's been a challenging time, but I want to talk and share some of my own personal life experiences, what I've been dealing with. Um, I'm almost 52 years old. I've been through a lot of different challenges in my life and as a humanity, as people on this planet, we've all had to deal with many things. If you look at the history of humanity and all the different things, we as human beings and as people with love and taking control of situations, we can overcome anything that's out there. When I first started in real estate at 18 years old in the late 80s, interest rates were at astronomical points at 18, 19%. In the early 90s, I remember when the riots happened, here I was, a young Asian man driving a Mercedes in the middle of LA when buildings were burning on either side of the street as I'm rushing to go home from the middle of the riots with people running across the street, attacking cars, and the fear of that, and all the fires and the devastation Los Angeles went through in those riots. Then in the early 90s, the earthquake, I remember the earthquake, we were all there experiencing it, and how many escrows canceled, and people didn't buy homes, and all the stress that went through that. And then back in, God, what was the next devastation? The earthquake, we had the riots, <laughs> we had the market crash of 2008, 2007. Oh, 9-11, gosh, do you remember 9-11, that Tuesday morning, uh, when all of a sudden the world changed? Everyone was panicked and fearful. My job and our job as human beings is to, first of all, get rid of the fear. Uh, we need to educate ourselves and know what's really going on and pay attention. Um, you know, Beverly Hills is a wonderful city and fortunately, we're taking place as people in this town, and we've been doing this now for about a month to two months. When this all first started coming out, we educated ourselves with our doctors, people around the world in high medical positions, who kind of start to understand what's going on and how we can protect ourselves, our family, our friends, and our clients. That's all we can do. We can, we can control ourselves, our mindset, our thoughts, get rid of the fears. I'm doing more meditations now than I've ever done in my life because I go to bed, I go on my Facebook feed, and all you see are horrible events and horrible news. I don't watch the news. I don't need to watch CNN, I don't need to watch CSNBC. I'm gonna hear the news anyways. But it's not gonna help me, and it's not gonna help my friends and my family and my clients. All I can do is keep moving forward every single day in all the different realms of my life. And with all my friends out there, I wanna help people to not live in this fear the fear and the concerns and the continuous worries that so many of us are facing are going to affect our immune system and will give you a much higher chance of potentially catching this terrible virus that's out there. Um, just as an interesting aside, you know, many of you know I love parties and events and that's part of the Beverly Hills lifestyle, but we basically know that is over for the time being. Hey, it's going to come back. Whether it's 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, we can live. We can live a few months without parties and without buying expensive, stupid things from Rodeo Drive that we don't need. What we need now is to return back to the roots of who we are as human beings, which is taking care of ourselves, our family, our loved ones, and spending time with those loved ones. We never know when something might happen. I was on a vacation with my mom in Hawaii at 32 years old with my sister, and she died unexpectedly in our arms of heart failure. Never thought that would happen, but it did. And I got through that. So we have to together, pull together, help anyone you can, help your neighbors, help your friends. Someone, someone's sick and, or they're at home and they can't go get their medications or they, can't, they need some assistance. You gotta be there to help them. Help yourself first and, and help yourself by creating the mindset of not living in the sphere and the worry. It's simply not gonna do anything. Um, right now, you know, in the real estate market, people say, oh my God, what's happening in the real estate market? Are things gonna happen? The bottom line is, 32 years selling real estate, I don't care interest rates were 18%, I don't care of the market crash in 2008, I don't care about um, the, the, the earthquakes in the 90s and the riots, people always have to buy and sell real estate. And that's what I'm here to talk about, I don't care about that part of it right now. Um, but people are afraid, and yes, people are losing their jobs. We had a deal last week that canceled because the day before closing, the buyer lost her job. And it's the first time in 32 years that's ever happened in one of my transactions. But life is so frail, and yes, Jeff, you're right, life is so frail, and you know, the virus is going everywhere, and it doesn't escape or block sexual boundaries, physical boundaries, wealth boundaries, it affects everyone. And I'm so glad that in Beverly Hills, we basically made a decision, and last night, we had a lovely dinner with some very close friends at Spago, which is one of our top restaurants, and we were enjoying, and we're all talking about how 
every single social event in Beverly Hills, and there were probably eight or 12 events in the next month, really big major events that have all been canceled. All of the real estate conferences, our company took a lead two weeks ago and canceled all of the events and stopped any employees of Realogy, our parent company, from traveling at this time. It's just not a safe time to travel. It's not a safe time to be in crowds. It's not, I mean, yes, we have to protect ourselves and our families, but people could unknowingly have the virus and start spreading it around and nobody knows. If we all kind of stay home and focus back on what's important in life, I mean, think of the days of Little House on the Prairie, right? They had their homes, little bits of food. It was love and it was family and it was um, caring for each other. Let's get back to that. Let's, let's focus more on the important things in life. Yes, I love luxury and jewelry and fancy cars and expensive houses, and that's all nice. But it's not gonna help you or protect you if someone in your family gets ill. So, so basically in Beverly Hills, all of the big events have been canceled. All of the parties have been canceled. Even there were several dinner parties scheduled this week and next week, those are all canceled. And I really applaud those people that didn't wanna disappoint their friends, but did that to protect everyone, because that's what we have to do. We still have to go to work every day. Look, we're gonna have some challenges in our economy over the next three to four to six months. Obviously, it's already been taking place in the stock market, we all see that. But in terms of the reality is, things go up, they go down, people always have to buy, people always have to sell, we all have to live. Hopefully, if you've prepared yourself in advance, you have food and supplies and water and things you need to protect your family. In the event, we all have to be home and stuck for two, three or four weeks. Look what's happening in Italy. That could very easily and very quickly become a reality in our country. I really think our country at this particular point in time should close all the schools down, should stop all big events, you know, or any social events. Look, we can live a few weeks, a few months without these parties and events and going out to restaurants. And last night, I jokingly said in my post, I said, the last supper. And I didn't mean it like it's the last time I'm gonna go out to eat dinner or lunch, but it is the last supper for now, because look, we're, we're so happy just to be home, Gabriel and I, with the dogs by the fireplace, in the comfort and safety of our home, and not being out there with situations that could seriously affect us or other people around us. So just my advice is don't live in the fears, live in your power, live in your strength, live in, your, in the love in your heart, and, and what you can do for people. I mean, yesterday I was driving home, um, and I was you know, stopped at a stoplight and a lady fell on the street, on the floor, and I thought, oh my God, I pulled my car over to stop and go run and help her. Another man did the same thing. So much good in this world. Yes, there's a lot of bad going on right now, there's a lot of fear going on, but there's so much good. And as humanity, let's get back to our greatness and our goodness and the love in our hearts and the care we can give to others and, and to help, even if it's just a thought to make people feel better going to your neighbor's house and checking in on them and making sure they're okay. Do they need something if you're going to the market? I don't know. I don't know what's right for you or what's right for your friends and family, but what I do know is I am not gonna buy into the fear. I am concerned. I am being very careful and cautious and protecting myself and my loved ones, but I'm not gonna live in the fear and I'm not going to allow that to affect me, my life, and my clients. We've got a number of deals in escrow. Fortunately, in the real estate business, for those of you that are worried about that, so far, so good. From what I've seen across the country, since the interest rates dropped, people are so excited to buy real estate. The, and and uh, Ivy Zellman, one of the top economists, said yesterday that the interest rates are trumping the coronavirus fears. And I'm seeing that. Even the deals I have now, I thought, well, are these buyers gonna cancel on this $20 million deal, this $5 million deal, this $3 million deal? Look, it's, it's worrisome and it's fearsome, fearful. And some may and some may not, but People still have to buy, people still have to sell, we all have to live, we want to be with our families, we need to take time and care to protect those around us and protect yourselves again. So, um, who's out there talking? Hey Jeff, how are you? Um, <laughs> that's funny, we need, we need some lightness in our world and stop sharing negative things on social media. If you're one of those that shares all the negative stuff and the bad news, don't share that. Share positivity, share some light, some happiness, some positive things that people can can hook onto and latch onto instead of this constant fear. I mean, like I said, I don't watch the news, but you know, the other night I'm in bed, it's like 11.30, I'm going on my phone, all of a sudden I saw a world news article or post, a video, I started watching it, and immediately I just, I could feel myself closing down and shutting down, and Gabriel's like, what's the matter, what's the matter? And I said, oh, I just saw something, I don't wanna talk about it, and, uh, but 
we can't allow what's happening outside of us to affect us and our world. Thank you, Tom. And Tom, thank you for what you just shared a while ago. Uh, I've been meaning to share a video like this the last couple of days, but I didn't want to share it from a point of making people even more fearful because we, we don't need that right now. There's just way too much of that in our worlds. Thank you, Suzanne. I appreciate that. I know you. and You're doing a lot to help people around you. Exactly. Look, how many times in our world have things gone awry? Um, but we always survive. We always get through it, you know? And it's going to be what it's going to be. So what are we going to be for ourselves and for our loved ones? That's really all we have control about is our mindset, our personal feelings, what we allow into our body, and what we send out of our body, which is why I'm doing this video. And I'll probably do more and more of these each and every day. Usually on these live uh, posts, I don't get a lot of interactivity, but today, wow, we've got 47, 50 people. Karen's there. You're so welcome, my friend Lynn. Hey, Lynn, how are you? Uh, exactly one day at a time. I love that. Yeah, people hoarding toilet paper and water, Catherine. I know. Um, and I don't quite understand the hoarding of toilet paper. I mean, we always, I don't like to shop a lot. I love going to the farmer's market, as you know, but I don't like going to like regular markets. I don't, I don't shop at Costco, it's just not what I do. Um, so we always have supplies. It's always good to be prepared and have supplies. And being an earthquake country, or if you're in hurricane country or tornado country, always be prepared, be the best you can. And back a month and a half ago, when this all started happening, we're like, okay, let's make sure we're prepared. So I went and got all of our earthquake bags, make sure we had everything, and we did, thank goodness. We've got a few extra things just to make sure, but always be prepared. No matter this situation or other things in life happen. You know, you gotta be prepared on everything. And not worry about, you know, the price gouging going on today is kind of crazy. When I looked at my old earthquake box, I found uh, cases of the N95 masks that I bought five, six, seven years ago. They were like $4 a bag of five. And now when I bought extra ones a month and a half ago, they were $10 a piece and like $199 shipping for a box that weighs like six ounces. It's crazy. But that's just the way things are. Um, if you're taking it to Costco, <laughs> I am not going to Costco. I don't go to Costco. I did years ago. I don't ever go there again and I don't need to. Um, uh, yes, Bernetta, I am in my office and um, yeah, the birds are behind me. Yes, exactly. And I'm trying to focus on that. Like every morning in my affirmations, I focus on the gratitude. I'm alive, I'm healthy, physically, mentally, spiritually. I've got my family, my friends. I'm thankful for my coaches and my team and my company and my clients, all the experiences I've had in life. I also make time to be thankful for myself because I never was or grateful for who I am. Um, I was always down to myself as a young person, but now I know to be grateful for everything and grateful for in the morning I say, I'm grateful for the air I breathe and I stand here in my office and I'm grateful for the blue skies and the birds outside and we have a new little lizard that's living in our home that I'm so happy about. I met him and he's, you know, we don't see a lot of lizards in our house, but met this beautiful little lizard. I talked to him, I pet him, I told him you have a safe place to live, we have food for you, we have lots of fountains with water, we have lots of bugs to eat. <laughs> Gabrielle's starting to feed him, bring him food. So let's all do our part. Little, it doesn't matter the littlest tiny thing you have no idea the waves and repercussions that that good thought or energy or deed does for many, many people around you. Um, it's just so important to just give more love, give more kindness than ever, uh, give appreciation to your loved ones because having lost loved ones just like that without ever even remotely thinking that would happen, I know how precious life is. And look, there's gonna be people we all know that make it very sick or even die from this terrible virus. So we need to be prepared for that. We need to protect ourselves and our family. Uh, yes, see, the, the lizard did hit the jackpot. <laughs> All the animals that come to our house, the raccoons, the squirrels, the birds, the hawks, all of them. They, they all have a safe home in our house and uh, we're in the jackpot too because we get to interact with those beautiful, wonderful creatures. Um, so it's nice. Yes, exactly, Charge. Positive, healthy living. Uh, affirmations. I do affirmations every single day. It's so, so, so important. And I think I, we were talking at dinner last night and our friend mentioned Einstein in one of his quotes. And I didn't research it again last night, but I know one of Einstein's quotes was something to do with love is the most powerful energy in the universe. Einstein, I mean, he's one of the smartest men in the entire history of humanity. But yet he talked about the power of love. And I do know that, that no, no matter what happens, love can conquer all. We all get angry. We all get upset. We all have moments where we're not as good as we should be. 
we're human beings, that's normal. But we can be aware of where we are, be aware of what we're doing, and change it. It's about our actions and what steps we take ourselves to help ourselves and help those around us. So, James, thank you for watching. James, Jeff, thank you so much for all of your comments. And uh, I heard about uh, the lady in your church that got the virus, so praying for everyone in the congregation. Uh, but this virus is spreading quickly, and I heard a, something this morning. There was a group of 200 people in Boston that went to an event. Two people were diagnosed with the virus, and now six days later, 92 people out of that event of 200 people now have also contracted the virus. And if we look at the numbers of, you know, 3 to 5% mortality rate, that's scary. Now, I don't mean it from a perspective of being scared and frightful. It is frightening, and it is scary. But the bottom line is don't allow that to be in your mind. Focus on, okay... Don't put myself or my family in those situations or those positions. Um, I had several speaking engagements, which thank God they were canceled. I was supposed to go attend a couple events. Um, thanks to my doctor's advice, I did not go, uh, and I'm glad I didn't. Um, follow what's in your heart, and if your heart tells you don't do it or do something to help someone, do that. The universe will protect you, and we have to trust the process of the universe. And I do truly believe, if as humanity, we take actions like they have done in Italy and other parts of the world where they're stopping public events and asking people not to go out and not to potentially spread a disease that may not, they may not even know that they have. That, I think, if we all put our love out there, our light out there, our prayers and our kindness, and we all take care of protecting our environments, it's quite possible that this could go away as quickly as it came meaning in 30 or 60 days, we could be done with this virus. But if we keep going as we're going, just running around, you know, trying to do all this stuff and go run around, it's just, it's not gonna happen. And even myself, I've always been kind of a germaphobe, so I'm always cleaning myself. I have little spray bottles of alcohol in my car, in my briefcase, all over the place. I'm, just, I'm cleaning my phone with alcohol 15 times a day. I used to do it five times a day, now it's 15 times a day. When I come in the morning, I take the Lysol and I spray every doorknob and handle in the office that I'm going to be touching. I do it two or three times a day, protecting myself and protecting those around me and in my office environment. It all starts for yourself, in your family, and in your home. Oh, it wasn't your church. I'm glad to hear that, Jeff. Because um, I know several churches in Beverly Hills, um, people have the virus and some of the temples have now closed. So my hope is, and I talked to some clients and I'm trying to call clients and talk to them and help them get through this hard time, like I did when the earthquake happened, like I did when the riots happened, like I did when 9-11 happened, all that stuff. All we can do is help those around us. Craig, I know you've been through a lot of rough times in your life and you've overcome them, so you know what I'm talking about. And uh, I'm glad that the CR meetings were canceled. That's really, really good that that happened. So I think I've rambled on long enough. Uh, Mary, what do you have to say here? I wanna make sure you don't pick up the virus and spread to those that are not as strong, exactly. So that's why I try not to be around too many people. Even, look, we go out every night for dinner. I used to go to lunch. I didn't go out for lunch today. It's one of the rare occasions. And I think dinner's out or done for now. Lunches, we'll see. Uh, I did have food delivered at the office. I was a little concerned about that, but it's fine. I said, thought to myself this morning, well, I guess the result of this, if I'm home and I'm not going out to eat, I'll lose a little bit of weight, right? <laughs> we all want to lose weight, so there's always a bright side to everything. So focus on the bright side. Focus on more time with those you love. And... But how nice would it be? I know that once in a while when power goes out and you have no television and you put the fireplace on and you're in the dark with candles, it's kind of nice, right? And you get to kind of just sit there and really relate to your loved ones. Instead of sitting there on the phone while you're watching TV and you're having a conversation where you're not really present. So let's all be more present to our loved ones, present to ourselves, and present to how we can help those around us. Yes, Jeff, and wash our hands. I don't want to talk about that stuff because we all know about that, but carry a little thing of alcohol with you everywhere you go, spray things, you valley park your car, spray everything and make sure it's clean. Look, that's all we can really do is protect ourselves as best we can and move on forward every day in a positive way and direction. And there will be moments and times throughout the day where we're gonna get afraid again and scared, but the question is how long are you gonna live in that fear? A minute, two minutes, an hour? The shorter the term, the better. And said, don't waste any of your energy on that negativity or fear. Focus your energy on helping others. That's how we're all going to overcome this. So, anyways, I think I've rambled on long enough. Hey, Oren, thanks for watching. Um, appreciate all of you, and I love your comments. I'd love to hear what you guys are doing or what's taking place 
in your neck of the woods, but I can just tell you, Beverly Hills, no one's shopping, no one's eating, no one's partying, and no one's going to dinners. We're basically doing the work we have to do at our offices, interacting with our staffs and our clients. Um, it's not doom and gloom. The real estate market is fine. Yeah, the stock market's volatile, but hey, we've seen stock market crashes before. That's nothing new. And what goes up must come down, and what comes down goes up. It just, that's just the way it is. But so far in real estate, I mean, this week there was a $60 million closing. Last week there was a closing for $40 million. So the super rich are still buying houses. People are first time buyers are. I saw a picture this weekend of a friend of mine. I don't know what area he was in. There was like 60 people outside the door in line to get into this open house. So obviously, as um, Ivy Zellman said, you know, the Trump, the interest rates are trumping the coronavirus fears. So again, we need to trump all those fears by doing our part. So thanks, Judith. I'm glad you're staying encouraged. Um, thank you for your comments. Fred, thank you. Uh, Fred is my coach. Thank you for being my coach. And we had a great conversation this morning about what's going on and how to help assist those around us to get through these challenging times. And we will all get through it together. We're all strong. We're human beings. Yes, Helen, I heard the farmer's market was closed until further notice, which is kind of sad. Where am I get my vegetables and fruit? But that's okay. Uh, like I said, may not have the stuff I'm used to for the time being, but that's okay. Maybe I'll lose a little bit of weight and look, we can all live on less. Less food, less luxury, less, you know, material things that really don't mean a difference or make a difference and focus on the love and the light and the happiness in the world. Um, face masks are no good. You're right, David. Face masks really don't help. And I bought a whole bunch of them and now the articles I've read said it doesn't help. Because even the face mask, if the germs get on there, they'll last. And if you touch the face mask, then the germs, you're going to touch your face and then you're going to get it. So, yeah. So, look. These are new times and it's interesting, the young people that I'm around that are like under 30 in their 20s, they really have no comprehension of what's really going on and they're particularly fearful. In one way, they're totally not concerned. Oh, it's nothing happened. I'm like, no, this is a very serious situation. Oh, it's like the flu. Okay, it is similar to a flu, but this is unknown territory. Nobody, no doctors, no hospitals, no scientists really know about this virus or how it's truly being transmitted or how how long it lasts or the incubation period. Is it, some people say seven days, some people, seven days, some people say 14 days, some people say 27 days. Who really knows? Um, all we can do is pray, protect ourselves, and again, um, just wanna share those thoughts. So I'll do another one of these videos, probably the next couple of days. Just all be safe, protect yourselves, maybe do a video like this for your sphere, your friends, just to encourage them to be positive and hopeful and pray and you know, I truly believe in collective prayer and collective energy. So if we as a planet all do the, the right thing, we all pray for positivity and we all pray for this to end soon, we together can change what's going on. I really believe that and I know that in my heart. I came from nothing and I built my whole life based on dreams, goals, and vision boards. And now we have to have new dreams, new goals, and vision boards. And right now the dream is luxury is family, luxury is love, it's not money, it's not material possessions, it's life. It's love, it's kindness, it's giving back and protecting each other. That's, that's what luxury is to me today, not the material luxury of the world that we all love and enjoy. And of course, I still do love those things, but it's not what's important. What's important is connections, because I know when I'm on my deathbed, whenever that's going to be, that I'm not going to be worried or thinking about any of my material possessions or the things I've bought over the years. I'm going to be thinking about the people I love and those special, precious moments and the people that have meant, meant something to me and contributed to my life. So those are my thoughts. Thank you all for listening and watching. Prayers to all of you to be safe, protect yourselves, get supplies that you need, and just go out there and be a ball of light, love, joy, and kindness to everyone in your world and to yourself. So lots of love and kisses, be safe, and I really hope to see you all again real soon, and just protect yourselves and take care. See you later.